Welcome to this demonstration of declarative JavaScript action chains in Oracle Visual Builder. My name is Shai Schmelzer, and in this demonstration, we're going to show you how easy it is to create JavaScript code on the client layer in a visual way with Oracle Visual Builder. Visual Builder is known as a development tool that makes it very easy to create user interfaces for web applications that bind to data. For example, over here, we're taking a business object of type employee. We're selecting which fields we want to show, and we're creating an edit page that will allow us to edit a specific employee based on a value of a parameter, which is the employee ID. Just by dragging and dropping, we're able to create those types of rich user interfaces, leveraging Oracle Jet JavaScript components. With this visual approach, we were able to create rich HTML interface very easily. In the new version of Visual Builder, we are also able to define business logic in JavaScript in a declarative way. Let's see how this would work. For example, we have here the salary field, and we might want to verify that the salary that we are giving someone is in a specific range, for example, based on the department that this employee works in. To do that, we're going to define a new event on the salary field. And over here, we're going to define our business logic. Visual Builder provides a set of actions that we can add to our logic. For example, we can add an if statement. In the if statement, we can refer to variables on the page. For example, we can check if the employee has a department. If there is a department, then we might want to go over and call a REST service to get the maximum salary for this department. Let's select the REST service to get the department information. We'll pass in a parameter, which is the department ID that the employee works in. This is how we map values into parameters. And then the results will be stored in a variable. We're going to call this the department info variable. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the maximum salary for this department is bigger than the allocated salary. So again, we'll pick up an if statement. We'll put it over here. We'll edit our condition here to ask if the information we got in the body for the department info, which include the maximum salary, we want to make sure that it's smaller than the salary that we're giving the specific employee. Like that. If this is actually smaller, then we have an issue and we want to fire a notification. Let's put in a notification here. We can type the message. And even provide a more detailed information. picking up again the information that we have from the REST call about the maximum salary. So this is how we defined our business logic in a declarative way. However, you can switch the code view. In the code view, you'll see that you have a function over here, which runs provided with a value as a parameter. Okay, we can add additional parameters if you need to. And then you can actually see our business logic. We do an if to check if there's a department, we call a REST service, we put the value inside the depth info variable, then we check if the depth info max salary is smaller than the employee salary, and then we fire a notification in case it isn't. At this stage, you can also rename this function. So for example, we can call this one the salary validator, and we can run to see this action in action. So here, for example, we have the information about Sean. We can update the salary, for example, to 40,000. And when we leave the field, we get our error message. If we wanted to debug our business logic, we can simply use our developer tools inside the browser. Your source code for the application is available just like any other part of your HTML. For example, under here, we can see our salary validator method. We can set breakpoints. For example, we can set a breakpoint over here and see how our business logic works. For example, if we 
switch this to 4,000, we hit our breakpoint. We can see that the max salary is 3,000 and the salary right now is 4,000, which means that if we'll continue to run, we'll show our error message correctly. The Visual Code Editor also allows you to create sub-function. For example, if you needed to call a REST service um, in a reusable function, you can drag it over here, create a reusable function, give it a name, provide parameters, and then, of course, customize your REST call. In addition, you can have areas where you call JavaScript logic. For example, if we needed to call a piece of JavaScript code, we can add it over here. You'll get a powerful code editor, including Code Insight. Like that. And of course, you can always switch to the code view to create code in an easier to use interface, such as this. On the left side, you also have the structure pane that shows you the structure and allows you to easily navigate to each part in your application. You can also, of course, collect areas of the code for easier visibility. You can easily drag and drop to position sections of your code and reorder them as well. With these new capabilities, Visual Builder becomes an even more powerful development environment. Creating JavaScript code now is simpler, debugging it is streamlined, and maintenance of your code is much easier with this visual and declarative approach to creating standard JavaScript code in your web applications.